All right, guys, Genghis Khan explained in eight minutes. I don't know much about the dude, literally and all. Maybe I did in high school, but I, that was like 12 years ago, bro, when I graduated. So let's check it out. Okay, feels like I'm watching something straight out of television, guys. What is this, bro? Okay. Live guide. That's what the channel's called. In the year 1162, between modern day Mongolia. Yeah, this is a video essay style video. That's not to say video essay style videos get aired on television or anything. Don't get aired on television, rather. Mongolia and Siberia, a ruthless leader and great conqueror was born. The King of Kings, a brutal barbarian, and the founder of the largest connected land empire the world has ever seen. His bro, I never seen 300, guys. His name? Genghis Khan. Yeah, bro. How did he even get up there? He was up there. He was up high there, guys. Like Genghis, together with his sons and grandsons, went to war on an immense scale. And in only 25 years, the Mongol army conquered more territory than the Romans had done in 400. By the time of his death in 1227, the Mongol Empire stretched from the Pacific Ocean to the Caspian Sea, encompassing around 10 million square miles. The empire was vast, measuring the same size as the African continent and larger than the United States, Canada, Mexico, Central America and the Caribbean islands combined, making Genghis Khan one of the most successful military commanders the world has ever known. Ever. Born in 1162 to the name Temujin, he was the son of a local chieftain and was said to have been born clutching a blood clot, a sign from heaven that he would become a great warrior. Clutching a blood clot? Uh, he helped the mom or something? He helped the mom get a blood clot out of his, uh, out of her body or something, guys? I, I don't understand completely. Temujin experienced grief and suffering from an early age, with his father being poisoned by a rival tribe when he was only nine years old. Damn, bro, that's a scary way, way to go out, right, guys? Poisoning? Oh, my goodness. After his father's death, the tribe abandoned Temujin and his family, as Mongol tribes would only follow a strong and respected leader, forcing them to survive in the harsh conditions of the steppes by themselves. What? And then they get banished by their tribe? Bro. These guys are wild. Thank goodness we don't live in those times anymore, right guys? It was during this time that Temujin killed his half-brother, who had been accused of hoarding food while others starved. Bro, he's killing? What? No, man. This allowed Temujin to gain control over the tribe, and soon he was leading it. Bro, this guy's ruthless, bro. No way. Alongside his lifelong friend and blood brother, Jamuka. Ten years later, Temujin understood that his small tribe in the open grasslands of the steppes was weak and exposed, so he sought to bolster his numbers by marrying into a local tribe. He soon found Borte, his first wife. Not only did Temujin get Bro, that's an interesting, like, thing she has on her head, man. I have no clue. ...gain a loving companion. I wonder how much something like that would go for- Dude, this is way back then, man. Well... This is like the one of the oldest history books, history, uh, like documentary style videos we've seen, man. 1161 through 1230, dude, what the? But more importantly, the fighting force that came with her. Temujin was not fated to have a peaceful life, as it would not be long until adversity returned to him. The powerful Merkit tribe came and raided his camp, killing many and stealing Borte away. Temujin and Jamuka managed to escape and made their way to the local Khan who had fought aside Temujin's father, begging for help. The Khan accepted their plea and soon Temujin... Okay, okay, finally meeting the Khan. I thought it was his last name, but... Uh, I don't know, guys. Like I said, I'm go I don't know much about the dude, didn't really learn about him. Temujin was at the head of a massive... If, I did, if there was like a section about him in the history books, it was like a paragraph or something. You playing RuneScape? Yeah. ...fighting force. Shortly after, he took swift and decisive action against those who wronged him. Heading to the Merkit camp in the mountains of northern Mongolia, he slaughtered the offending tribe, taking his wife back in the process. Dang, bro, straight up slaughtering a tribe. Wait, how does he do that himself, man? 
These cruel conditions Temujin faced in his earlier years helped shape him into the fierce warlord he was to become and taught him not only how to deal with his enemies, but also... Thankfully, we only do this, like, in video games, right, guys? I'm so glad we don't have to deal with, you know, war and stuff, guys. Like, you know what I mean? I hope, I hope we never have a war again. Also, the value of forging friendships and alliances. As time progressed, the tribe became divided. As the fundamental differences between the two leaders became apparent, Temujin valued talent wherever it came from, whereas Jamuka thought only those who had a noble birth should be respected. This led to a rift in the tribe and an eventual split, with Jamuka now leading a clan of his own. It would be two years until the pe He said, what, what does he mean by a noble birth, guys? would meet again, in which Jamuka's men slaughtered Temujin's unprepared and outnumbered tribe. Bro. Yeah, that's mostly what the history books we learn about in the history books, just war, guys. The generals Jamuka captured also faced a gruesome death, being boiled alive. No, oh, what the heck? These guys, this is just savagery. When Temujin found out what had happened, he was furious. And it said from that day on, he would seek revenge and pledge never to be defeated again. In 1204, the two finally fought each other in a pitched battle, which would be crucial for the survival of the mob. This feels like, uh, you know, like some sort of history book, but in video format, guys. Mongol people and would determine Temujin's position as commander. It's my strings of PKing everyone at Res and RTO. We will, uh, we'll do that again when, um, when Dead Man ends, guys. We'll also PK uh, in Dead Man mode today or probably tomorrow, actually. Tribesmen were tri I actually just got a PK today. It will be on the main channel. They did both archery and horsemanship, and when the battle began, they used this to deadly effect. Bows were made from wood and animal bone, and had a shooting range of 500 yards. The military ranking was also based on the idea of meritocracy. So it was in this battle that Temujin proved his military genius. He told each warrior to light five fires on the eve of the battle, so uh -oh. Reminds me like Burning Man, you know how Burning Man's in the news right now. Bolts ...would report an immense fighting force, striking fear into the heart of the enemy. As Literally, how they boiled the dude, it reminds me of Burning Man. Like, snap, nah, bro. That's too much. Dawn broke, both armies advanced, and when close enough, Temujin's forces unleashed a barrage of arrows and used cavalry charges to demolish Jamu- Wait, his name is Temujin? I thought it was Genghis. Bro. This is making me uh, confused, bro. Or is that the- Like- I don't know, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Luka's army. He then feigned retreat with some of his squadrons, luring his foe into a planned ambush where they were promptly slaughtered. This led to a decisive victory over his former blood brother, who fled from the battle. Jamuka was later betrayed by two of his generals and brought before Temujin. When he refused the second chance Temujin offered him, he was given an honorable death, and finally the Mongols were unified. Wait, an honorable? Like, what do you mean by honorable, guys? Hey, bro. They gave him like a, a, an ultimatum and he straight up denied it. ...under one leader. To honor this great achievement, Temujin was granted the title of Genghis Khan in 1206, meaning universal leader. Genghis Khan soon turned his attention to the vast Chinese dynasties in the east. He knew the emperor would never allow such a strong and unified Mongolia on his borders, and so decided to take the first strike. Heading into China, the Khan's army plundered, raped, and killed any who stood in their way until they reached the capital of the north, Zongdu, now called Beijing. The city was one of the most advanced in the world, sporting 40-foot high walls that were completely alien to the nomadic Mongols. To get into the city, Genghis Khan used captured Chinese engineers to design siege equipment and camped outside the walls, cutting off vital supply lines. This lasted for so long that the Chinese began to starve to death by the thousands, many turning to cannibalism. When the no oh, man, uh, that's, that's so much, bro. It almost seems like fiction, bro. Doesn't it, guys? In my opinion. Mongols went to take the city, they met reduced resistance, and were able to take it with relative ease. 
This led to a month of plunder and destruction that enhanced Genghis Khan's reputation as a bloodthirsty murderer and brought the Mongol Empire to new heights. His army continued west after the conquest, managing to reach Eastern Europe, showing little sign of slowing down. Genghis Khan died in 1227 during his final conquest into China. According to the secret history, his last words were, I have conquered for you a large empire, but my life was too short to take the whole world. That I leave to you. He appointed his son Ogadai as his successor in the hopes that he could complete the thing. It's just like running in the family. Divine mission. Genghis Khan was buried in an unmarked grave, with all those who arranged the funeral apparently executed in order to keep the location a secret. Wait, what? No way, bro. So they just straight up did that too. No, dude, that's so wild, bro. Genghis Khan left a remarkable legacy, not only in blood and warfare, but also in his descendants. As he took the most beautiful women as prizes from every conquest, naturally, he had many children. So many, in fact, that recent studies suggest that one in every 200 people living today are directly descended from him. Under Gen no, what? Genghis Khan's rule, they're also developed- And this guy's a player as well, man? ...developed a complex and sophisticated society, which paved the way for modern-day civilization. The Mongols disregarded race, ethnicity, and class, creating a society based on meritocracy, where individuals were rewarded on ability and talent, above all other things. They isn't that kind of like uh, how it is nowadays? They also practice religious tolerance, allowing the Mongol Empire to become one of the most diverse in history. In an attempt to unify the feuding tribes of Mongolia, Genghis Khan gave land to each tribe and established a legal system where he laid out uniform punishments so as to create a combined society that abided by the same laws. He also forbade the enslavement of any Mongol, helping to solidify equality for all citizens. He also offered protection for the merchants traveling across his empire, leading to the re-establishment of the le hey, protecting trade. That's good. That's good. Legendary Silk Road that enabled the transportation of goods and snap. I visited that website way back in the day. Technology from east to west. This path was so valued and well protected, it was said that a man could walk from one end of the Mongol Empire to the other with a gold plate on his head and never be attacked. This also enabled the spread of China. Imagine how much a gold plate would go for nowadays. Chinese culture and ideas to the growing civilizations in Europe. Trade surged and new technology such as paper, gunpowder and the compass made its way to the West, igniting the Renaissance just a few generations later. While there is no doubt that Genghis Khan was a cunning and ruthless warlord, it is debatable whether he was just an evil barbarian or managed to benefit the world in some way. While there is truth to the idea that he was a genocidal maniac, he also created a diverse and equal society under which the trade of both techn- Bro, kinda like a... Napoleon, right guys? Technology and I'm not sure if it's the same- Napoleon was the same as this guy. This guy freaking- Executed his own brother, bro. Culture flourished. In this way, Genghis Khan started an empire that had a wide and long-lasting impact on civilization in both the East and the West, the repercussions of which can still be felt today. Still, today, guys, like... Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and for exclusive... Yeah, we, we might have to watch the uh, Nikola Tesla one as well. That got interesting towards the end. Awards, check out our Patreon page. Guys, check out the live guide in the description. Wow, this, I, I thought this video was uploaded sooner. Six years ago? We don't know. We didn't We didn't know we were making history, but we were just having fun. Genghis Khan, is that his real quote? Genghis Khan's story is truly fascinating. He literally started from the bottom, and how he became so powerful is, is amazing. Happens, happens. And if you were you weren't extremely bad at during those times, you basically got nowhere in life. True, sure, true. Sure. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I do all more reactions live on Twitch. If you want to come through, say hi. You're more than welcome, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace out. Peace out.